Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Dialogue Wheel. We're spinning the wheel this week, and my guests this week include Corky. Hello. There we go. Callie. <laughs> hey. And Matt. Oh, hi. He turned off his mic. Yeah, his no, I, I figured it out. <laughs> I got there. Uh, yeah, so Dialogue Wheel, for those that are not familiar, if you're new to the program, it's a show where the world of arts, business, and the culture of gaming collide, and we take one really complex issue that people have written books and books about and distill it into one easy-to-consume thesis. And this week, we want to teach you about some really poisonous words. Recurrent consumer spending opportunities. Mm. It just feels good saying that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty gross. Wonderful legal like character. Yeah. I love it. It, just, it. it feels like it was made in a boardroom where people really clap themselves on the back. <laughs> We Good it job, out. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think it means? Because you haven't done any prep, so we don't know what it means. What yeah. do you think it means, Corky? It means uh, you keep spending money. There we go. And money. And mm -hmm. more money. Well, that's essentially it. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out in a recent conference call, uh, Take Two, which is a massive corporation, a video game company, that includes, of course, 2K, and obviously what Take-Two does, Rockstar, all these other gaming corporations, the game company that made such incredible single-player games like Bioshock is now saying they will only make games that have recurrent consumer spending opportunities. On this conference call, the CEO, Strauss Zelnick, who we've done shout-outs for a lot. What's up, Strauss? Come on to the show. We want to talk to you. Got some business to talk about. Mm -hmm. He said that the business, once upon a time, was a big, chunky opportunity to engage for 10 hours or perhaps 100 hours. That has turned into ongoing engagement. Day after day, week after week, you fall in love with these titles, and they become a part of your life. We said that we aim to have recurrent consumer spending opportunities for every title that we put out at this company. Every single title will have recurrent consumer spending opportunities. Those are loot boxes. That's a, ridiculous. That's what yeah. that means. It's not even loot boxes. It's like the My Career. <laughs> Just on every yeah. game that they make. It's the idea that money still needs to be made after you made that almost $90 purchase. Yeah. And if you think you could find refuge in maybe a company like Ubisoft, their latest quarterly reports follow something very similar where they're getting close to one third of their revenue this way. So they're still trying to make some uh, course, some yeah. bigger games. But uh, I know, Matt, you've been looking into Activision Blizzard. Yo, Activision Blizzard's making a killing on okay. this stuff, man. So what are they doing? So, I mean, they haven't published their full year yet, but just in the third quarter alone, they've made over a billion dollars in game revenue. That's in, With a B. Yeah, that's in game revenue, right? And I mean, if you think, if you look back even to last year, 2016, they made 3.6 billion. Now that's a big, that's for the entire year. Yeah. But if you look at the same time for last year, from 2015, mm -hmm. uh, they made 1.6. That's a two billion so dollar they, growth. Almost doubling the revenue. And that was year. that was you know that was last year. I, mm -hmm. I can only imagine with this year with like just people getting a little more on board with the system yeah. and kind of understanding and people going further in depth with it. Um, they got in trouble again, too, because it turns out Activision Blizzard, part of that parent company, was doing some dubious things. Well, right? yeah. I mean, okay, so this wonderful patent came out in 2015 that uh, Activision Blizzard bought. And uh, the name of it is something uh, along, they don't really have a little nut tight, nice name for it, but it's the system and method for driving microtransactions in multiplayer video games. See, all of this fucking corporate speak right? is just designed to obfuscate truth. I hate it so much. Like, they, why don't they just say, ways to take my money? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, and, and, and it's it's weird because I didn't think it was really possible to entice people other than being like, ooh, this shiny piece of armor or, oh, this loot box that's like, you know, a yeah. Christmas present. But this way with this patent is a way to match players in a way that entices you to buy in-game items. So, for example, you can be a junior player in a game and you're, you're going to get matched up with someone who is at an expert level who has something like a really awesome sniper mm -hmm. that like ridiculously outmatches you. And the idea is the junior player will see that and go, oh, man, I want to be like that person. 
I need to buy this. So I, to their credit, Activision Blizzard did say that they were just flirting with this idea. Yeah, well, they own it and they haven't implemented it in yeah. any of their games. They but haven't. Just, that, that seems to go directly against games being fun. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I'll, I will say this. I'm glad Blizzard Activision bought this patent yeah. and not something like uh, EA or yeah. uh, Ubisoft. I'm just saying that, you know, uh, I've been a, uh, I love what Blizzard Activision does with their microtransactions mm-hmm. and their kind of thing. Um, so the fact that they have it, I feel okay about it. But I'll be honest with you, the fact that that patent even exists. That someone was it's, thinking it's, that yeah. You know what I mean? Is <clears throat> kind so of It just garbage. feels greasy. You mentioned like, greasy as hell. So yeah. let's talk about EA a little bit. Ugh. So recently Ugh. they were in the news because of uh, Battlefront 2. <laughs> and initially in the initial beta they got a lot of trouble because it was clearly pay to win. You know, their entire system of progression in multiplayer was based on loot boxes. A lot of people have been playing uh, a lot of the multiplayer that's currently available, and EA and the publishers behind it said they changed it and made it work, and you can't pay to win. Corky. Bullshit. That Lies. is not true. Not true. <laughs> there it Corky, is, ladies and gentlemen. Not Enliven me, please. Very true. So picture this. You, bat- you bought Battlefront 2. Yes. You're like, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not spend... Any money? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play the game online, and you're playing your game. Oh God! Tell me it's gonna be fun. Yep, it's tell gonna me more. Fun. Tell me more. I'm enjoying this so much. And then some, just level fifteen comes in and just destroys everything. I mean, and that happened. A YouTuber. <laughs> the prophecy is true. Yeah, and uh, this YouTuber called X Factor Gaming spent ninety dollars. To, or in loot boxes yeah. and, you know, in-game purchasing and leveled up his fighter and all that fun stuff. He said he w- reached level 12 in an hour. I mean, $90 better get me somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And it turns out you can use, like, this, the lower end stuff to build up the bigger stuff. Yeah, you can dismantle it. Dismantle right? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that gives an even more unfair advantage for the ones who don't, get the loot boxes. Okay, so straightforward what they were saying isn't exactly false. Like you can't just buy into it, but you can make a run around way of getting there with your money. Yeah. And you're still really damn good. Yeah. yeah. So it's not paid to win directly. No. Yeah. But it kinda it, is. It enhances. There's once, just not enough safe walls there. In like the, once uh, system. he hits level twenty and he has all those loot boxes, he's just going to destroy everyone. Yeah, it's like the end game yeah. sort of stuff right. at this point. It's so, like pay to win. So yeah. let's, let's look Even at these, these they... corporations that we're dealing with now. we got Take-Two, mm-hmm. we got Ubisoft, we got Activision Blizzard, and we have EA, which I think just recently was in talks, final stages for like half a billion dollars to buy uh, Respawn. Yeah. Yeah. So these are corporations that represent, I would say, a fair chunk of the gaming industry, and every single one of them are introducing this poisonous recurrent consumer spending opportunity into their video games. It's the name for the new time of video games that we're living uh, in. I think that this is like, we're not getting as upset enough as we should about this. Because no. I think with uh, if this gets pushed into more titles, this will take away everything that we really enjoy about ge- video yeah. games. Everything that we really enjoyed about Horizon Zero Dawn playing through this week. I think could be gone because simply it would not be affordable. Oh yeah, I mean you mm-hmm. mentioned you mentioned developers. Bioshock. Bioshock was one of the biggest series to come out. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, and the you fact imagine that, microtransactions. But in you know, that? And oh that's my, my point. Like I can't, you can't get I, the plasmids unless you have this. It's, <laughs> it's just one of those things where if if they're going to be kind of implemented into single player games and and just. Uh, take away from story. Yeah. Uh, how shitty is that? How shitty would it be to turn a page in a book and be like, "Sorry, you can't have this page of the book until you fucking put some more money out." It's a dollar. Like, you know what I it's mean? A, yeah. It's Callie. I mean, you've been very even, quiet. Even yeah. DLCs are like that, right? Like, does deal? Do you consider DLC to well, be microtransactions? I think DLCs are great because if you think about really great DLCs, that just came out this week. Horizon Zero Dawn's latest one, Frozen Wild, is twenty bucks, and you're getting. Like a fifteen to twenty hour experience that's but new that's and still exciting. Paying extra. I, I think it's okay to pay for... more if you're getting great content. I don't want to pay more to have a casino thing to maybe win another little ducky to wear on my character, <laughs> and that's the business model <laughs> of then, the entire game. But then you don't have to. You don't have to put your money I agree. away if you don't. I don't want have to. to. But the fact that every one of these major corporations is saying like this is what we want to do, 
it has to hurt just game development as a whole. Well, yeah, it's so, going to change it. I don't think it's going to hurt it. You don't think it hurts, it. though? You don't think it's I think bad it's going to change I mean, we've I saw seen... I Cali. We've, we've seen games change over, you know, decades. Yeah. Like, they're completely different than they were before. So I think, you know... Whatever drives the next change will be whatever a, drives the next change. And in this case, change. microtransactions. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's always a bad thing. Like, it lets you fund the game. Um, you know, you have free to play games mm. that are completely funded by people who just want to buy clothes and duckies to put on their characters. Shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Sorry, I just. <laughs> it, it's one of those things where that can work on free to play games, and I think that's a, a wonderful way of looking yeah. at it. But when you buy a game like in uh, 2K18 and the My Career mode, like Callie is going to do because she's a big fan. Oh, oh yeah, no. But I'm just saying that <laughs> if course. you buy that and something like getting a haircut in in the um, My Career section is now a microtransaction, like that's something that should be in any customization of character <laughs> mode. You it, know how NBA players like their haircuts. I mean, uh, haircuts, why, shoes. I mean, come on. This is bullshit. And that's <laughs> why it, it has to be done right. And I think... But why do... The idea that we have to accept it, I think, is something that we need to consider here. Like, we don't yeah. need... Just because one company is doing it because it made the money doesn't mean we have to accept it. We can go back... like. Horizon Zero Dawn, I think, is the game of the year. I keep bringing it up because <laughs> it has sold a what shit game? ton. Horizon Zero Dawn. What game? <laughs> Just so you all know. What, what game? Yeah. I'll say it again. I'll, yeah. say, I'll keep saying it. It doesn't pay me much. But they still made a lot of money, and they still made a AAA title. And they didn't have to do any of this sort of dubious kind of player addiction things. It's also gambling, too. Like, I don't want to get little kids ready to gamble and that is their acceptance and introduction to the video game industry. Yeah, and the the thing is, shouldn't shouldn't a game be able to fund itself by how good it is, not needing those micro transactions to keep it alive? Well, sometimes the games want to continue to grow. I mean, we didn't even know. Like, I don't. Um, Maybe they did. I don't know. I don't know if they originally wanted Destiny to be what it is now, but oh, it grew God, over not. time. <laughs> it changed as it evolved for like two years and, and then they yeah. released Destiny 2 which is almost like they just fixed all the things. But that's I liked uh, opening a loot box though. Has it ever been like a good experience? You know it has. It, it, Everyone's love, a booster junkie. Come oh, on. I love <laughs> why, I mean, do you, I think it's, why do you think there's so much money in Magic the Gathering? It's because uh, people are obsessed that's with the opening game. that. That's the whole point of the game. Like we don't have the fact that we're comparing Horizon Zero Dawn all these other great titles that are beautiful stories to Gathering Pokemon cards, <laughs> like they're, they're two different worlds. Yeah, no, they are. And, and I, you're talking about two different setups in games, and like you're saying, let's go with this one and scrap the rest. Yes, okay, that's, absolutely. And that's great. But the thing is that they both exist. There's no they way they have to. But um, but they do. And the thing is that we're talking with our wallets here, as you can tell, in things like a billion dollars in in-game revenue. Are you kidding yeah. me? Like. It's gonna be here, and hopefully it'll be a fad where things like you know season passes. Like every game had a season pass, yeah. you know, like, like what two years ago. Well, they yeah. still push them. They're they not, they do, they're but they're not, they're not like it's like anymore. everything had one, yeah. and like back before that was subscription. So you guys don't think like, this could destroy the video game industry? I think that we're gonna get games if this continues. We're gonna get games like Destiny One, where they're gonna launch a game that's not finished, that's what about, not complete. What about Anthem is a great example. If you guys know, it's the mm. BioWare's next iteration. They've put uh, Mass Effect on hold. They might be making Dragon Age soon, but who knows? Mm -hmm. But they're spending a lot of time on money on this open world Destiny clone where you can fly and swim. That game is going to have microtransactions, and it could be it could have that same kind of Destiny issues yeah. of not being a completed game. This is a company that made some of the best single player stories I know, I in the world. I think Anthem looks like it's going to be great, and if it has microtransactions to oh, fund its it growth, I don't think that that's wrong. Like. You're Would you rather Anthem or an incredibly nuanced, powerful single-player story? Because this is a company that used to do that. It depends. And money it depends on how it. they want to do the game. What do you want, Kelly? I don't care about the developers. What do you want? What do I want? I don't know. Tell, I just want tell more me what Mario. you want. <laughs> <laughs> Mario, okay, Mario's a great example. Yeah. Mario's a great I want example. All my moons. <laughs> Nintendo uh, took moons. years to make Odyssey. And it's getting tens across the board. People are saying from your little kids to adults, everyone loves it. There are no microtransactions to get a different hat or to make sure that you can access a different area. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to make iterative titles every year. Like, I think, what if microtransactions came into your Mario? Would you feel jaded? 
I it, would, it would depend because it came into my Mass Effect and is, now I'm crying. Even, I don't know. even, Ma- you did even get the, Mario you did get has really. evolved. I mean, look at Mario now. You, where are the mushrooms? Where are the? We got something off camera. What What are you saying off camera? Amiibos are basically microtransactions. Okay, uh, amiibos you know are the collector cards. It's a little bit different. Yeah, it's, I, mean, it's I have similar. them all. Yeah, no, right? And like before amiibos, you had the fucking uh, Spyro. Um, yes. Skyland, Skyland. 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 Skylanders, which were like I I was working at a at a, um, a place in Quebec at the time called uh, Microplay and microtransaction play, probably. Oh, right. <laughs> but like yeah. those things were just not possible to find. They were coming in and people were lining up at the door yeah. to get their hands on mm-hmm. them. And I mean, if you want to equate it to a microtransaction, like yeah, it's the same thing. Like people are dying to put money into into games like this. People that, people have money they want to spend on video games. Yeah. Shouldn't we yeah. let them spend it? on maybe $20, $30 expansions to games that make them better, that are standalone experiences, as opposed to like $15,000 that one person spent on the loot crates for Mass Effect Andromeda, a bullshit, terrible game. You're talking about you, aren't you? Hey, hey yeah, listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this show could be, have a lot more production value if I didn't need to get that Krogan Annihilator. So, uh, <laughs> but I just, I really think that this way of looking at the video game industry by the top corporate elites that make all these games is going to hurt everything we like. So you're yeah. saying that it, they can live separately. I think they can, and if if we're smart and and if people pay for what they want, uh, one oh. will, one will fade out. One will. No, and I think capitalism it, doesn't work. It's mm, not going to work here. No, I just I just want to believe that if we're angry about something, that we'll do something about it. And I understand that might not be how the world works, but like if you if you're like, no, this sucks and this is stupid then don't put your money there. It's a simple, especially since the companies are working off these numbers and they're doing it because the numbers are growing. But you and I, and even if everyone in this room decided we're not gonna buy the latest, greatest games, that's not gonna make a dent. That's not no. gonna change it. No, it won't be, that's no. it. So, it's gotta be like a movement. Callie, it, just humor me for a second. <laughs> Say this is a bad thing, because you do agree that it, there's situations where it can be bad. Yeah, of okay. course. How the hell do we make this better? Because that's something, we don't just wanna be negative. What's a way that we could look at this and say, I want to improve the lot of the game industry because I still want Mario, uh, Super Mario Odysseys. I still want the Horizon Zero Dawns. And you know what? I want people to enjoy their 2K18s that are coming out. Like, I still want those to exist. How do we all live in a happy, happy family? Solve the video game industry. Go. <laughs> right now? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. I don't know. Um... <laughs> wow! No, Matt. Tell- well, you and your idea of the dollar. That you, yeah. It's just yeah. No, it's, the- you fight, fight with your money, but at the same time, um, <clears throat> I mean, if, if uh, I don't want to like jump to to the end of the point here, but like doing something like this is also super helpful. I mean, making sure that we're uh, solving it. Just, <laughs> just like <laughs> right now, by the end of this episode, all of this. Will you're be all going to know what to do. Don't worry. Thank me later. Um, <laughs> no, just opening up the conversation and getting the facts out there and showing people yeah. like this is what's happening. Because I know, like, uh, beyond doing research, the common gamer, you know, yeah. doesn't know this stuff. Kelly, how do I convince you that this is like the worst thing ever? Because I think no, that's an important conversation. I don't. Right? I don't think it's the worst thing ever. Okay. I think. I, 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 get I think that. the. <laughs> way i think the way that a lot of companies are doing it like ea and like take two is but they're fucking a battlefront it's, and it's on the tip win. of your tongue yeah. pay to win is awful okay, okay. pay to win yeah. is awful and i very much disagree with that yeah. i do think pay to win is terrible okay i don't send her hate folks i <laughs> <laughs> i don't think microtransactions in themselves is inherently terrible though because they can help fund a game mm-hmm. and they can you know the art is not free, guys. Like, No, I get in- it. The art isn't free, but this is why we should patronize companies that don't want to addict us to gambling as opposed to, like, I think I would say this devalues the art by saying, instead of saying, you know what, this is a great game and this DLC should cost 30 bucks because that's what it's worth. We're saying this DLC will be $3 and I know we're going to make our nut back with you buying different Stormtroopers. No, it's albums. more like support us. It's not, but this isn't Patreon. These are, these are companies <laughs> that know how to addict maybe, us to gambling. Then I maybe, think it's evil. I think it's really I don't know. Evil. See, ma- then maybe the, the right thing to do is Burn it all to down. make sure yeah. that it's not pay to win and that it's only cosmetic. And that if you want to be colorful and pretty and rubber ducky, then you go for I it. If you don't, then... Ducky. Then just leave it well, alone. I mean, I mean, I can agree with that. I can agree with cosmetically. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Because co- so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no! 
<laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, Matt. I just Sorry. no. I just think cosmetically, cosmetics works. It's the same thing I uh, said in the loot box video. I think cosmetics fine for microtransactions, but if it's pay to win or pay to get um, um, the story, yeah. which is what uh, you kind of like take two. The fact that you know they have some. Are you guys of the, fans of Breaking Bad? Uh, yes. Why? Do you remember the episode where Mike said that beautiful speech where he talked about half measures? No more half measures. Yeah, well, we gotta we gotta destroy this thing. Mm-hmm. This is too no much. More, no, we're jumping back and forth. We we can't. I I really do think that I I hear what you guys are saying, but I think fundamentally, if we don't have a united front here and we say that this needs to end now, all of a sudden this insidious corporatism that's destroying art mm-hmm. is gonna become that much more ubiquitous in our life. So if it's it starts with little hats, it ends with us getting numbers tattooed on our neck. No. <laughs> That's what I think this is going to do. How about, how about this? <laughs> all right. Cali's Resolution oh, here we go. is that if you pay for the game, you can only pay for DLCs, no microtransactions. If it has microtransactions, it's free. Boom. Boom. All right. So, so there's an answer. There you go. I, I, Callie I'm saved this. the day once again. Callie. Um, <laughs> my hero. We are introducing one? a new idea. Thank you again, guys, very much. Round of applause for everyone. Woo-hoo. Excellent job. Oh, man. I didn't Especially do anything. Three claps. <laughs> there we go. There um, we go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about this? This is a, a big topic that's going to really change the video game industry. Our dialogue wheel next week. If there's something that you think really needs to be examined, please comment below or send us a message at VGS at 640Toronto.com and yeah, we'll feature it on our next Dialogue Wheel. If you want to talk about sexism in the video game industry, why Mario is dope, these are just some things that we can discuss. <laughs> Mario, is uh, Mario is dope. I don't think that's a, dis- think that's <laughs> a discussion dopest. topic. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, thanks for ruining that. <laughs> this is VGS. Make sure you bleed for your art, Mandy Bukowski. Without a doubt, the worst episode ever. Rest assured that I was on the internet within minutes, registering my disgust throughout the world.